Congressman Mark Pocan is on the line with us. It's the first hour of our Wednesday program. And uh, the, therefore, Middays with Mark, Congressman Pocan, you can tweet him at Rep Mark Pocan, M A R K C O P O C A N, or uh, his website is uh, pocan.house.gov. Congressman, welcome back. Uh, thanks, Tom. Glad to be here. Great to have you with us. So, uh, any, any you know broad thoughts about you know what's going on this week in Congress or or in the country or the world as a whole that you'd like to comment on before we start picking up phone calls? Sure. Well, I mean, you know, one, I think we're all waiting to see if we can finally get this omnibus done. Uh, what was supposed to have been done a year ago uh, to get funding through September 30th. Uh, the deadline is coming up this week. Once again, <laughs> Congress can't get anywhere because the Republicans don't know how to govern. Um, I think we'd be better off with a, a room full of monkeys and a, a typewriter and uh, maybe an abacus, and you could get a, a omnibus done faster than these folks are operating. But I, I think we'll have something done this week. Um, the details are still a little bit fuzzy, but uh, by the time we get it, uh, we will probably have um, a, a very, very large budget uh, with about 12 hours to review, which is just, again, uh, what a terrible process. It's because the Republicans don't know what they're doing. So that, that's kind of the big thing that's shadowing most of the week. Um, you know, yesterday we had Betsy DeVos uh, in my subcommittee. That's always interesting, hmm. um, having her there. Uh, you know, I've never seen anyone so evasive on answers, and not because they're intentionally evasive, because... You know, she often just doesn't have the answers. She just seems clueless. I, I, you know, I, 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 I don't mean to to, to uh, ridicule somebody, but uh, she just comes across as clueless. Is is she really that um, uh, uninformed or poorly informed or misinformed or I mean, what's going on? You know, she knows one thing, uh, and that one thing only, that she believes that we should take pri uh, public dollars and put them into private schools, the so-called choice or voucher programs. Right. Beyond that, um, she really doesn't have a deep amount of knowledge in anything else in education. So, um, you know, even asking her about guns, I mean, remember she had her famous statement about uh, arm, you know, needing guns in schools because uh, there could be grizzlies and I did have to ask her if she still thinks that we need guns in schools to protect us from grizzlies, and she has changed her opinion on that. But that's kind of the level of conversation you get with Betsy DeVos, which uh, is a little bit difficult. Yeah. Um, and, and then finally, I think uh, you know, the last thing just worth mentioning is uh, there was a big fundraiser the Republicans had with uh, President Trump last night uh, here in town, and uh, he said he's going to go around the country and campaign for Republicans. And I think you know there was a lot of uh, silence and a deep, uh, swallowing going on. They didn't hoping. applaud that line? Well, you know, I, I think privately they know when he comes behind the scenes and does fundraisers, that's good for them. But when he does public events, um, you know, maybe not so good these days. And yeah. uh, so I thought, you know, I, I encourage the president to get around and do as many of these uh, support rallies as he can for Republicans across the country. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, get out there, Donald. Um, exactly. On the one hand, on the other hand, every time he does it, all the, all the cable TV networks go to full time Donald coverage. I mean, there's a great piece in the New York Times today about how forget Cambridge Analytica. Donald Trump hacked the media. He he presented himself as a competent, smart, savvy businessman for 11 years on Celebrity and Prentice, which he isn't, and and then that image of him was used to sell him, and then he got uh, two billion dollars worth of free time. Uh, during the primary by running a reality show, you know, by, by basically hacking television. I mean, it, Cambridge Analytica obviously did some really nasty stuff, but, you know, without $2 billion worth of free TV time, or had Bernie, for example, or even Hillary had that $2 billion worth of free, free time during the, you know, 2015 and early 2016, uh, it, it, Donald Trump would, would, you know, would not be president. Yeah, and every day it was dominant, no matter what hour of the day he yeah. was on TV and they were covering him. Uh, and uh, now, of course, we know what that's brought us. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's let's hope our. Uh, although the media seems not to have learned from that, because every time he gives a speech, they just go to the speech. I mean, they did this yesterday or the day before. It was. It's. It's just. This is. This is crazy. Anyhow, uh, Congressman, you want to pick up some phone calls here? Sure. Okay. Let's go for it. Jesse in Miami, Florida. You are on the air with Congressman Mark Pocan. Hey, uh, hi, Mr. Pocan. Uh, I hope you, uh, well, this is just a quick one. I hope you're studying Bernie Sanders because you're probably following him in his footsteps. That town hall he gave Monday was historic. But let me get to the point. Hey, if I was on that panel with Bernie this Monday, I would have asked the question, political power comes from economical power. 
why don't we take control of the Federal Reserve? Because there we have collateralization with no representation. So the basic question is, Mr. Pocan, how can Congress and the people take back the Treasury? That's, that's it. Collateralization with no representation. I love that, Jesse. Hey, Congressman? <laughs> well, Jesse, I, I tell you, I agree with you that, I mean, economics are the central issue. Um, I'm not sure if most people are talking about the Federal Reserve when they're at their kitchen table. Um, so if we really want to engage with uh, voters about what they're talking about, because they don't live and die politics like all of us, you know, really kind of, you know, spend a lot more time than most people do on politics, we have to talk about the issues that they care about. And um, I would argue we saw this in Connor Lamb's election. Uh, we saw this in the special elections for state legislatures across the country. People talk about can they afford their mortgage or rent? Can they send their uh, kids to college if they want to go? Can they take a family vacation? Do they have health care? Do they have a pension? Those are the sort of economic issues. So I completely agree with you, Jesse. Those issues are vital, and Bernie Sanders uh, uh, better than almost anyone, although I'd argue Elizabeth Warren is very close um, to it, uh, cover those issues in the right way. And that's why they make people care and relevant uh, to what they talk about. So I think those are the issues that we really need to focus on the most. And we kind of have to all make ourselves remember that, um, because sometimes I know we all have special issues we care about. We might have a very specific opinion on something, but unless we're talking in the biggest, broadest way about those issues that the average person who we need to get out and vote uh, care about, we're really not talking to that voter. So um, you're, you're absolutely right. It's on economics. I would just say let's make it as populist as possible on economics, and let's also not forget Social Security and Medicare. Catherine in El Macero, California. You're on the air with Congressman Pocan. Hi. I actually live in Davis. Okay. Um, but our zip code's changed. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I had a question about the um, job offer that Representative Pocan made to Andrew McCabe. And I was wondering if Andrew McCabe took him up on the job offer so that he can keep his pension. Yeah, Catherine, uh, thanks for bringing it up. I was, I was going to bring it up in the beginning. And you know, I, I don't have an answer yet. We've talked to his folks. I think he's got actually now multiple offers. But more importantly, he's also involved in a lawsuit over the firing. So on Friday night, um, the president had the attorney general fire Andrew McCabe literally 26 hours before his uh, retirement to try to take away his ability to have – uh, his full pension. And, you know, c growing up in a lower middle class family, I mean, you know, you don't mess with people's futures, right? This was the president trying to be a thug. Um, he was trying to send a message, if you screw with him, if you go talk to Mueller, because he's so desperate to derail this investigation, if you talk to Mueller, he's going to not just destroy you, but your family and your future. And, and part of that is your pension. So we couldn't let that happen. So the first thing I, when I read that Saturday morning, I'm like, no, you know what? I will hire him. We will get him across the finish line if that's what he needs, if that's what's going to work for him. And I don't care if it's me or whoever he works for. Just You shouldn't lose your pension because Donald Trump was trying to send a message that anyone who does this, he will go after. And I think we were able to show there are checks and balances in the system. We checked him. Uh, the president won't hopefully get his way. We have given some options to Andrew McCabe. And now really the ball is in his court along with the lawsuit he has. So I think the important thing for, for the public is we proved once again the president, because he lacks human decency, it's a huge character flaw he has, uh, he still can't win when he wants to be a mafiosa thug. He, when he wants to be Vladimir Putin, we're not going to let him. Yeah, there you go. He's... Uh... This I, I was on Fox on Sunday talking about this, and I and I said basically this was this was the Trump crime family's way of saying if you if you mess with us we will destroy you, and they they just Absolutely. went nuts. I think the guy's head exploded when I said Trump crime family. <laughs> Anyhow, we're back with Mike, Congressman Mark Pocan in just a moment. It's middays with Mark. Your calls for the Congress.